Hello to everyone. This is Viewpoint on Noyan Tapan TV and I am Benjamin Pogosian. This time we will discuss the reasons behind the new war launched by Azerbaijan against Armenia. So, in last six years, this is the third war launched by Azerbaijan. Four day war in April 2016, second Karabakh war 2020, and now this September 2022 war. Of course, we had also Tabush escalation in July 2020, but its intensity and also its scope does not match with the term of war. So, why now and what are Azerbaijani main goals to launch the new war against Armenia? Azerbaijan has two main requirements from Armenia. First, to sign peace treaty, where there will be no mention about Nagorno-Karabakh. So, Azerbaijan not only wants Armenia to recognize Nagorno-Karabakh as part of Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan wants Armenia to accept that there is no Nagorno-Karabakh, because if in the peace treaty there will be no mention about Nagorno-Karabakh, then definitely all, not only Azerbaijan, but all actors involved in South Caucasus will receive clear message. Armenia accepts Azerbaijani vision that 2020 war destroyed Nagorno-Karabakh and no Nagorno-Karabakh exists anymore. This is number one requirement from Azerbaijan. And the second requirement is to provide the corridor via Sunik to connect Azerbaijan with Nakhijevan with no Armenian presence there. No border control, no customs control, no passport controls. So these are two main requirements. Of course, Azerbaijan also wants Armenia to recognize territorial integrity of Azerbaijan within its 1991 Soviet-Azerbaijan borders, which automatically means Nagorno-Karabakh is part of Azerbaijan. But as I mentioned, the key for Azerbaijan is not even to force Armenia to recognize Nagorno-Karabakh as part of Azerbaijan, but to accept the fact or accept the Azerbaijani argument that Nagorno-Karabakh does not exist. So uh, these are the two requirements and uh, most probably during the recent negotiations between Armenian and Azerbaijani leaders, which took place in Brussels on August 31, Azerbaijan did not receive affirmative answer from the Armenian side. However, here we should understand that these both requirements are significant for Azerbaijan. And any idea that, okay, let's accept one requirement of Azerbaijan and hope that he will drop another one are very far away from reality. So, if anyone believes that by accepting Azerbaijani demand and recognizing that mm, no Nagorno-Karabakh exists anymore, Armenia may hope that Azerbaijan will drop its demands on Langezor Corridor, this is a big mistake. Azerbaijan wants both. Of course, Azerbaijan may have a strategy. Let's first take Nagorno-Karabakh and then we will deal with the corridor. But again, to hope that by accepting Azerbaijani demand, signing peace treaty with Azerbaijan with zero mention about Nagorno-Karabakh will allow Armenia to forget about this corridor issue or Azerbaijan will be satisfied and Azerbaijan will forget about the corridor issue. These are far away from the reality. Also, let's try to understand the international uh, position here. The European Union and the United States, they are pushing forward for signing a peace treaty between Armenia and Azerbaijan. At first, they try to convince Azerbaijan to accept some autonomy for Nagorno-Karabakh within Azerbaijan. And the Armenian government made the first step when, in April 2022, Prime Minister made his famous speech in Parliament, telling about the readiness of Armenia to lower the bar of status for Nagorno-Karabakh. However, Azerbaijan firmly rebuked this offer, telling that there is no Nagorno-Karabakh, which means there could be no autonomous Nagorno-Karabakh within Azerbaijan. Currently, the United States and the European Union offers us to sign a peace treaty with zero mention about Nagorno-Karabakh, telling us that after this, they will try to convince President Aliyev to deal with dignity with the Armenian minority of Azerbaijan. In this scenario, there will be no uh, administrative territorial unit of Nagorno-Karabakh within Azerbaijan, Simply, there will be Armenian minority within Azerbaijan, which will have 
Azerbaijani passports, and then the European Union and the United States will try to put pressure on convince President Aliyev to provide rights for this Armenian minority. The same way, yes, probably Azerbaijan is obliged to provide rights for other ethnic minorities living in Azerbaijan. Talish, Lesgin, Tats, Russians, Jews, and etc. Et so, uh, the Western position is clear. Okay, we need peace treaty, and if Azerbaijan rejects any autonomy for Nagorno-Karabakh, and if Azerbaijan demands no mention of Nagorno-Karabakh in this peace treaty, let's accept the Azerbaijani demands, and then work with Azerbaijan on the protection of uh, ethnic rights of Armenian ethnic minorities. Of course, the strategic goal of the European Union and the United States is to use this treaty and then demand the withdrawal of Russian peacekeepers from Nagorno-Karabakh after November 2025. The logic is clear. If Armenia accepts that uh, there is no Nagorno-Karabakh and if there is a peace treaty between Armenia and Azerbaijan, this means that uh, there are no conflicts and there is no need for Russian peacekeepers to be deployed in non-existence area. So again, strategic goal of the United States and the EU is to push out Russian troops from Nagorno-Karabakh as a way to decrease Russian presence and influence in South Caucasus and a Russian influence on Azerbaijan in particular. But of course this will be only the first step because definitely then the United States and the European Union will work towards decreasing the Russian presence in Armenia itself. So what Russia thinks about all of this? Uh, definitely, Russia is interested on normal Azerbaijan-Armenia relations. Russia has zero intentions to be involved in another mm, uh, hostilities in the post-Soviet space. The war in Ukraine is totally enough for Russia. That is why Russia is interested to see stability here. Russia does not want to have military clash with Azerbaijan to protect its ally Armenia. And not only because Russia does not want to have a second front, but also Russia understands very well that any clash with Azerbaijan will very negatively impact its relation with Turkey, while Turkey now is a very significant partner for Russia for different reasons. But also Russia does not want to see its troops leaving Nagorno-Karabakh after November 2025. That is why, from Russian perspective, the best case scenario is have a peace treaty when there will be only one short notice about Nagorno-Karabakh, that the sides agree that the issue of Nagorno-Karabakh remains open, and Armenia and Azerbaijan agrees to continue negotiations to uh, reach a final settlement on Nagorno-Karabakh in the future, without any commitments on time frame, without any commitments uh, how these negotiations may end. But uh, definitely Azerbaijan is against uh, this uh, vision. So Azerbaijan against, Azerbaijan rejects the option that, okay, in peace treaty there will be a one sentence about Nagorno-Karabakh fixing that issues still open, and Armenia and Azerbaijan will continue uh, negotiations. So uh, here is a, a reality which Armenia faces, but uh, again the discussions and the notion that okay Azerbaijan have two demands, let's satisfy at least one and hope that Azerbaijan will drop the second one or let's satisfy the first demand, let's recognize that Nagorno-Karabakh does not exist and let's hope that the European Union and the United States will force Azerbaijan at least to forget about Karabakh, about Corridor, about Zangezor Corridor, and they will force Azerbaijan to forget about any pressure on Armenia proper, this 29,800 square kilometers. These are far away from uh, uh, reality. Even if Armenia signs this peace treaty with Azerbaijan with zero mention about Nagorno-Karabakh, which actually means that Armenia will accept Azerbaijani claim that no Nagorno-Karabakh exists anymore. This does not mean that Azerbaijan and Turkey will forget about Sunik, that Azerbaijan and Turkey will forget about Zangezor Corridor. Because these both goals to finish with Nagorno-Karabakh and to open the corridor via Sunik and to have a de facto control via Sunik, these are both equally strategically important for Azerbaijan and for Turkey. So by accepting the Azerbaijani demands and signing peace treaty with Azerbaijan, with no mention about Nagorno-Karabakh and accepting that no Nagorno-Karabakh exists anymore, Armenia will not save itself. Armenia will not have a situation when there will be no Turkish-Azerbaijani pressure on Armenia itself. Simply, Armenia will help Azerbaijan to concentrate all its forces and all its focus on Armenia itself. So this will not 
uh, bring us to the stability. This will not bring us to the peace even within so-called internationally recognized borders of Armenia. So again, uh, the hope or discussions or uh, thoughts or arguments, let's, okay, we should concentrate on international recognized border of Armenia. The only way is to give up on Karabakh to satisfy this demand of Azerbaijan and then hope that the United States, the European Union will force Azerbaijan to stop about putting pressure on Armenia, on Sunik, on Bayodzor. These are not going to happen. This is all for now and we will meet soon.